once again, we head out into the Hunter Call of the Wild for a hunt that is long overdue. Our return to Mississippi Acres and Catamore specifically, looking for a second gold rare gator to pair with one that we got a couple of months back. And it's a good problem to have that we've had so much to do between the other games and of course just Revan Tuli Coast and the Great One Black Bear Grind that we still haven't gotten back to this map. But I'm excited to head out here and see what we can find. Obviously, this is among the maps that got a redistribution and reset, so everything is going to be new. And I'm excited to see new zone times, new zone locations, and what we run into. Now, it is, at least currently in-game, a good bit earlier than we would hunted gators in the past. And the reason for that is kind of that I wanted to get to explore a bit more of the map, and also because we don't know what gator zone times are. That is a bit of a bummer. Diamond is 1.97, and that was a 1.9. Pretty decent Eastern Cottontail, we still only have the one diamond for them. And they are pretty nice rabbit models, so I wouldn't mind getting another one, maybe with a different fur type. But as for now, I think what we're going to try to do is sort of hunt through the fields and, at least on occasion, sort of get up close to the rivers and see if we can spot any gators and, and just try to figure out what their zone times are, just so we have a better idea of when to go and really focus on them and maybe when to focus on some of the other things. So one important factor, pretty much right off the bat here, is going to be kind of determining... You have to be kidding me. Is that albino? I... I guess it's less important now. Because we have... I think we have everything we need. I mean, that has to make us up to 419. If I'm not mistaken, he should score 419 point something. What I was going to say was... We gotta just spot some gators and try to figure out when and where to hunt them. Apparently right here and right now is the best time to do that. We're in a spot that I never would have actually spent any time going after gators. Really only it was to try to see if we could get some eyes on one and try to figure out their zone times. So what's going to be tough is obviously it's headed for the water and I don't think there's anything we can do about that. So probably we're gonna have to Kind of sit and watch him and maybe see where he goes. Now, it is currently 7.15 in game, and we got their feed zone 3 to 6, so they must just feed again. This could be interesting, but I mean, if he follows that one at all, maybe there's a chance for a shot over there. At least we'll know what rarity this alligator is, because there are some pie balls that really are almost indistinguishable from albinos at a distance, and... It could well be one of those, but I'm really not sure where he went. I think we're actually kind of backtracking right now, but I just don't see any sign of any over on that side. So for the moment, we're just kind of going this way because there's some other gators over there. But this guy is an albino, which is the rarity that I want. Just going to be a matter of figuring out where he went. I haven't seen him since he kind of got down below the grass. I don't know. It's because there's that many over there it's making me think that these tracks are correct and we should be going that direction i just can't imagine where he would have gone it's honestly kind of tempting and i think we may do it just to go for a little bit of a, a test here because i don't know where that albino is but it's been so long since we've actually shot a gator that i wanted to practice and actually that made me realize that i'm not sure if the second shot hit we don't have the ammo loaded that I would like to for this. Now, one plus is the fact that he's running as much as he is. That pretty much indicates that if we were to shoot the albino at least over in that spot, it would have a long way to go before it would expire, and that's the type of thing that we'd probably just take with the muzzleloader. The thing is, still no sign of that, but I do want to go and see where that hits. But I wanted to equip the 454 soft points, and I think I got the flat nose instead so if we equip those or maybe I did accidentally equip the right ones I didn't even think about it when I equipped them if that's the case though it makes the vital hit kind of even more alarming now we've done this on numerous occasions essentially going for two single lung shots with those hollow point rounds and trying to bring the gator down really quickly with the expansion of those rounds I don't know where our second shot impacted, and in fact, we only hit him twice the first time too far forward, I guess. 
They were hollow points though. And once we hit them in the lung, it did well. So it was more so a case of bad shot placement, and even more reason, I suppose, to do some practicing. So now, we know we have the right ammo loaded, we know it can work as long as we aim well, and the question is, where did the albino get to? There's a couple of ways to approach this. We've got the feed zone, so if we have to, we can come back later and try to catch him out in that. We could also just kind of hang around and see if he is eventually kind of surfaces. There's a chance we spooked him and I just never saw that happen. So we could just kind of wait and see. In the meantime, I guess we'll kind of get back on the tracks and see what we can figure out. I think at this point, the question kind of becomes, is that the one that was with the albino? And I just, I can't remember. We spotted it first. I thought it was maybe up to 347, but I think that's the low end of the albino estimate. So if it is, he just kind of came up out of the water there and walked onto that little bit of land. Maybe the albino will follow suit. Actually, I think that's him there. So that must have been the case. We must have spooked them. And they had been underwater this entire time. So, I guess we'll kind of try to watch and see where they go. Oh man, he is right there. And I don't think he's fleeing. He's just kind of moving quickly. This is probably as good a chance as we're going to get. I'd like to either alert him or... I mean, if he'll just take that slow for a moment, we can try to go for it there. I need him spotted though so we can see where the vitals are. And I really don't love just kind of moving around out in the open. But if it does even alert him and slow him down for a second, it could work to our advantage. He was kind of heading back up. That I don't like. I mean, if we could just, for a second, get him spotted, that's all we need to do. I just, I don't trust it with the, with the hollow points. And he's going to flee, so I guess we're going to try to make this happen while he's running really don't like not being able to see that's a vital hit okay no more shots until we see what happens just gonna try to make sure he's not gonna get into the water man i think at, at that point 25 to 50 we're gonna end up getting that gators are one of the most stressful and frustrating things to hunt in this game but there's nothing like it there's literally in call of the wild Nothing that compares to if you mess up the shot, it literally could disappear forever or even just spooking it and letting it get away. Sometimes they go go underwater and they're just really, really tough to find, but we got them down. Not exactly the most conventional way, but what tends to be the more common way. Anytime that we hunt gators, we get close enough, we just can't get them spotted. That's part of what makes them so frustrating and then they end up taking off. But is this going to be correct. Do albino gators fall into the same category as other rares and score at the top end of their score estimate? No. They do not. That is a 362 silver. So I had a feeling that 419 shouldn't be possible for a level 6. I wonder why that would be. Two and a half kilometers of tracking. Back of the left lung. As he scooted through there. But I want to say our, our level 7 piebald was like 14s as well. So I wasn't even sure that it could have been possible. Because they are basically scored by their weight. It's just there's a little bit of variance in the trophy rating that can kind of alter a little bit away from what the actual weight is. Maybe it's been changed and maybe, you know, piebald gators no longer do it either. But I believe they used to. And that's a bit of a bummer that he's not ultimately a gold after all the time that we put in. We're still going to tax him. Still probably at least temporarily going to put him in the spot that I want to have the two rare gators. It's now 10 o'clock in game, by the way. So quite some time has passed since initially spotting him. And I guess maybe we'll run up the coast and kind of see what happens. But I had been planning initially since, you know, feeling like we were going to get at least into position to take a shot, that we would stop gator hunting with only two gators and go on and hunt something else, thinking that it was going to be a gold because they are just incredibly like frustrating to hunt. You can't get them spotted, you can't see them behind grass and stuff, and it can be, you know, a little annoying to do that time after time. But 
If we are after a rare gold, a silver albino unfortunately is not quite going to cut it. So we'll head up the coast, we'll see if we can get a couple more, and then maybe we'll still head into the fields and look for raccoons and other such things in a bit. This has been probably the most disappointing kind of like river run in quite some time. And as you can see, I've got the 308 and not the muzzleloader, mostly because I realized the zeroing on the muzzleloader is still bugged. It's supposed to, with the, uh, the better ammunition, the minier balls versus the round balls. The round balls, I think, are supposed to max at 100 or 150 meters zero. These should go to 200 meters, and at the moment they don't, so I grabbed the 308 to have some range, and in this case, with a female running by, I just figured we'd take it and... Whatever shots landed would be just fine, not like we're trying to save the middle on that, but we're almost up to this lodge, and quite frankly, with the shots that we just fired, probably anything else up along here would have spooked. We'll go up here quick, we'll just run. If we spook something out, maybe we can make a shot with the uh, 308 again. But I was kind of expecting a little bit more, and there were a couple that we spooked on the way up. It was when I realized the muzzleloader zeroing was incorrect, and then trying to get closer, Hard to spot gators, and unfortunately those ones took off. Nothing big, but way fewer over here than I remember. And as we head through the last spot the gators tend to rest, I think we're going to be on to some other species. So all of that to end up getting one extra female gator and then go and hunt some other animals anyway. And I probably should clarify that that maybe sounded like I was more disappointed with an albino gator than I actually am. Just I was really under the impression it was going to be a gold based on that score estimate. I've always wanted an albino, and the fact that we finally got one almost a year later is pretty cool. It took about 10 months to finally get an albino gator, but we managed it today. Would have been nice if it was a little bit bigger, but no complaints. We will go and switch our loadout a bit. I think we're going to grab probably 12 gauge buckshot for raccoons, and maybe the 22 LR for long shots at rabbits or turkeys or anything that we may encounter. And I guess kind of fitting. The next thing we run into is a female a gray fox. Now, one thing that is very cool about the gray fox is that both males and females can make diamond. I think they're the only species that don't have any kind of antlers or horns. Gemsbuck can do that. I'm not immediately having anything else come to mind that can have both males and females make diamond, particularly, again, when it is just based on weight. I really think that's a cool thing, and we've had, by now, four, probably, diamond gray fox. All of them have in males, so a weird thing, kind of, maybe a bit of a casual grind for a female diamond gray fox. Not something we're going to just actively go out and grind for day after day, but when we see one just running by, we'll take the shot and, you know, maybe a little bit of a dice roll towards eventually having a level 9 female pop up. You know, I feel like this happens basically every time we come to Mississippi. There's this kind of reminder that there's so many things that I would love to get from this map that we have yet to find. And Another is a albino quail. I just think the idea of that would be such a cool addition, and they are incredibly rare to actually encounter. And as we're going through here, we've got a track of a max weight female quail, which of course is what you're after, even though the males are the ones that reach level 3. They can't be diamond. You need a really, you know, close to max weight level 2 female to actually get a diamond. And the max weight track for them is this 0.16 to 0.19 kg. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be all that big. The difference between a diamond and a silver is not all that much. So we're just going to kind of keep running this way. We've got 12 gauge birdshot obviously loaded now. And hopefully eventually this one flushes. It's really tough. You know, they're so small. You can't really spot them just with the shotgun up like this. So we'll just shoot some till we get it, hopefully. Now the ideal would be if they'd kind of flush out and over us. And that could be it. And if we're going to get it and find out, it's going to have to be with the 22, which that is a small target to hit with something with a rifle scope and not a shotgun. I mean, I'm feeling like we're close-ish, but none of those shots impacted. So what we can do is go ahead and pick up the track now that we've spotted that one. And at least we can know if it's the one that we've been tracking and it only goes up to 254, probably not one we want to continue with. And indeed it is. So... We'll just keep going, uh, but now at least we're not to worry about specifically getting that one. I really am hoping that the entire flock will flush back over us and give us a chance with the shotgun, but now a little less pressure maybe to make sure we get that one, because we know it's at best still like 15-ish shy of diamond. 
and it is no joke. You really have to be paying attention. They're not loud enough to notice that they take off unless you're looking in that direction, especially in the corn where they have some distance to go before they're even really visible, kind of being down below the corn stalks. So at least we got three out of there. Maybe a chance at one more? That one's not that far. It is a male. But I mean, in theory, if it flushes at all, we should be able to get it. But even still, it requires a good bit of focus to see where they actually go. And I want to make sure as well we don't run ahead of it. Uh, unless it just ran into the trees. I'm not sure where it went. That may or may not be it. Regardless, at least we got it. No idea if that's the one that we initially heard, but we'll take that then probably get on to looking for raccoon still. I really wanted to get one with Buckshot. That is our biggest and it was a male, so fair chance it could have been. I like this red-brown coloration. I don't know if the females can have that plumage type, but I would like a diamond of one of those eventually. But we will, at least for now, put the Buckshot back in our 12 gauge and I really, like I said, want to encounter one and go figure, right, as we do that. I mean... Kind of a, maybe a bad day to be a quail, but we'll just get that for respawns and hopefully now get on to finding a raccoon or two. By the way, would have been our best one. Did they change some of the, I guess it's the harvest green. They just look a lot better. All of them, all the bluish types look quite good. I suppose right on par with just about everything else in this hunt. Kind of shifting gears here. We do have a max weight estimate female gray fox. And there would be a chance this could be a level 9. There's probably a much better chance it's going to be a 7 or an 8, but you never know. And I'm going to assume based on the rest zone there, it probably is not too far away. Good chance it fled in that direction. Shouldn't be too long till we find out. And it is a mythical. Now, I have seen, and it was a male, but at least one mythical diamond posted. Just going to squeeze a shot through there with the 243 because odds are it's probably not going to be a diamond, but we actually surprisingly made that shot anyway, and I think there's a good chance that's actually going to be our last kill. Far from the plan this hunt, but some of the best hunts kind of do go that way, and we do have to go back to the Trophy Lodge for our albino gator. As for our Two Tones Mythical Female Gray Fox, 5.9 diamond is 6.4, so a ways to go. Once again, really good look in that harvest screen, but... 6.43 for diamond for them, so would have needed quite a bit more, but kind of shows that it is indeed possible. So let's go and place our gator in the lodge. I wish we could have gotten at least one raccoon with buckshot, but everything kind of kept on changing and moving the goalposts for today's hunt. But as for our newest addition, finally taking down this melanistic black buck, which maybe one day if we can get a gold melanistic and a gold leucistic black buck, we'll redo this, but. This is back in the Legacy Rack days of April 2020, so we'll put up instead the Albino 362. We'll get kind of the opposite pose of the pie bulb, and that is pretty neat. I actually don't mind necessarily this specifically the Albino ended up not being a gold, just because of the particular rare uh, pie bulb type that this is at 429, the level 7 that we shot. It just kind of... They look a lot more similar than I'd prefer. So one of the piebald variants that is a little bit darker or a melanistic, that also would maybe do some better contrast. Not to say I wouldn't take an albino up there. That obviously is really, really cool that we got it. But I wouldn't mind, you know, just looking a little bit different. I do think that's going to be cool, though, when we can eventually complete that. And nice for now to have two nice rare males up there. And maybe somewhere else on our map is a gold rare that's waiting on us. And... Hopefully we'll get back out there and get to explore and find that out sooner rather than later. But that was a good solid first hunt back on Mississippi. Found that albino gator really early on. Took darn near an hour to actually end up getting it. And I guess the way the score estimate works, it's not always at the top of the estimate. I really had my expectations for that to be a gold. Wasn't ready for that to end up being a silver. But in the end, gives us more reason to head back to Mississippi once again. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.